felt like I was sleeping on my mom and my mom and dad's floor because I was like worried about them. But I, um, yeah, I get scared of what's gonna happen. My name is Rose Cox. I'm 20 years old. I am a proud ambassador of the Australian Kookaburra Kids Foundation. I'm their young ambassador, a former Kookaburra kid and now volunteer. It began in 2008 when my mum, she contracted a rare neurological condition called transverse myelitis. Suddenly she was really sick um, and ended up going to hospital where she returned over 13 months later. So she was in the hospital for over a year. Um, I was eight at the time. I have a younger sister, her name's Stella, and she was three. It took its toll on our family and it wasn't long before my dad um, suddenly started not to be able to cope. He was retrenched from work and from then I think the spiral downhill just kept coming. He suffered from depression, anxiety and drug and alcohol dependencies. He stopped driving, he stopped cooking, he stopped cleaning, he stopped being that parental figure. And when I look back now, I see that he was, he was in a lot of pain. So before I found Kookaburra Kids, I was um, in a very dark place, I would say. I was, you know, being seen by the Child and Adolescent Unit in um, our local area. I was being treated as pre-suicidal at nine years of age. Um, going to school would be very hard for me to think, not to think when I was in year three, well, is dad gonna be okay? Will he still be around? Is he, what's he doing today? And that constant thought of what's going to happen next just was always in my head, like every day was something different with him, every day was something different with our family dynamic. Not knowing whether mum was in intensive care, whether she was gonna pass away or whether she was gonna recover fully or be able to walk again. I was nine when I first joined Kookaburra Kids, a scared um, young child that, you know, could I was quite vulnerable at that time and find, you know, talking about my story, I didn't really wanna come out of my shell. And so when I went to my first activity day, I got picked up. Um, obviously, Shire-based organisation, I'm from like inner west Sydney. Got picked up, drove there and went to my first camp and I fell in love with it. I was able to talk about my story with people, um, adults that I could trust, that were providing psychoeducation about why my dad was the way he was. If it wasn't for Kookaburra Kids, I wouldn't be here. And a lot of people go, yeah, you know, do you owe them that? And I go, yes I do, because the early intervention and support that I, that I received and the psychoeducation that I received as, as a child um, and as someone earlier on in my life, I've been able to you know, take it upon myself to be the change that I want to be and be supported to achieve, you know, overcome adversity. So for me, when I found Kookaburra Kids, I was just excited that I was able to be a kid again, you know? I was able to go there and just be myself. Uh, what I really thought um, was really important for me was the chat groups, the psychoeducation component of Kookaburra Kids' camps and activity days. It was, you know, it created a safe space. The whole camp is a safe space to have conversation. It was a journey of being a kid, being on camps, accessing respite, accessing resources and accessing skill, like learning skills to develop. I could probably spiral down if I don't do anything about my own mental health and um, you know my life. I could end up like my father or I could pick up the pieces. You know, things happen. I'm not sad. That's not my story. I know what's happened. And I could go and build a life for me advocating for those who don't have a voice. Often people look at the person that has the mental illness, but they don't look at the tree around them. And that's so important, like as I said, early intervention is key. So it then just, you know, kept going from there. I, um, in 2014, was announced the Young Ambassador of the Australian Cook Broke Kids Foundation, a very humbling title. I want to do something about this and support Kookaburra Kids to have a story and have a voice from a Kookaburra Kid. So I've been just, you know, advocating since. Um, when I graduated the program, I decided that I wanted to graduate a bit earlier, HSC, life commitments. But so the next year I could volunteer. So they have like the gap between um, being a kid, uh, 
being a kid and then being a volunteer. So now I am volunteering, I do like activity days and school holidays, um, which is really rewarding because I've come full circle and that for me is something that I, you know, I owe to Cookerbrook Kids, I owe to my family, myself um, and you know the community, but Cookerbrook Kids have been able to now see that from where I was, I can make that difference and I can see that hopefully these kids with this early intervention can be success stories like myself and go and lead fulfilling lives.